Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for a link to my Amazon store where I've compiled some of the very best knives and gear. There's a whole bunch of different categories, including some of my own personal recommendations. There's something down here for everybody, so make sure you take a look. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and welcome to episode 42 of The Knife Guy. If you are new to my channel or you just came out of some weird corner of the internet. I am a knife guy, knife collector, knife user, knife enthusiast, knife enjoyer of many types. Uh, we are all knife guys and gals. We all go down our own unique paths in this knife world. Um, but uh, oftentimes those paths intersect and we experience a lot of the same stuff. And so that's what this series is all about. If you're new, um, I lay out a whole bunch of knives that are either mine or some of my generous viewers and I pick them up and I flip them while I just talk and I, I sort of explore some of these things that I think um, are experiences that we all share. Um, I can't believe this is episode 42 of this. I upload every single day, literally every single day on this channel. I love knives, love you know all things knives. Um, so if you are brand new to my channel, please subscribe. Make sure your notifications are set to all because there's a lot of content coming. If you've been around for a while, um, or you'd like to support my channel, um, you can follow the link in the description of my Patreon, um, get your hands on some cool stickers, as well as gain access to my once a week Patreon exclusive video. Uh, the support would absolutely mean the world to me. So anyways, what are we talking about today? So um, at first you're going to think, wow, you've got a lot of Striders out there. Is this a Strider themed video? No, no. Um, so one of the main fr like shared frustrations in the knife community right now, and I, and I, this is something that, you know, I think Nick Shabazz was one of the, the main people. He was, he was one of the loudest people. And by, why, why I say loud, like a lot of people with ears open. Um, he um, said, you know, hey, this, this whole like limited run thing really drives me crazy because they prey on, you know, this, uh, this, this part of many of us. And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I definitely fall victim to it willingly. Um, there's only a few of these going to be made. So get your orders in now, right? And it's the preying on the fear of missing out. I have definitely jumped in on that. I still am like that. Um, and it's like, he's like, that sucks. You know, he's like, why, why can't you make it like, you know, we'll do, you know, cause, cause the argument is, well, they don't know that they're all going to sell and they don't want to make a whole bunch of them and find out people aren't going to buy them. And then his argument was, well, listen, why can't they do a run and say, Hey, if people like these and we'll do them again and then just do a different variant. So, um, his stance on it is it's okay to do special versions of knives, um, but keep making the same knife. If it's a good design, don't limit it and just be like, that's it. You know, there's no more. Only those people got it. And I completely understand the logic of that because it is frustrating if you don't, if you can't be around for, you know, like, I mean, the Spyderco sprints, that, that that's an example of like, you know, they, they kind of take advantage of that, but then again, like it's still, it's still a PM2. Like you can go get a PM2. You just can't get it in this exact color scheme and this exact, you know, blade steel. And yeah, there's probably a little bit of markup there. That's a little bit frustrating. That's a little bit different though. Maybe some people really wanted the A Purvis Zerks, but that was a limited, as far as I understand, the initial production of those was limited. Now maybe he will decide to do more of them, but that's the kind of thing. It's like, well, we're only doing 400 of these ever. We're only doing a hundred of these ever and they're gone yeah i agree with that that is frustrating i had never really thought of it that way until he pointed it out you know because everything that i had set my sights on you know i, I had gone after and at, you know looking back though there were definitely things i was like ah oh, they don't make those anymore that sucks i wanted one well, i'll check the secondary market holy cow 150 percent markup 200 percent markup no thanks yeah it's frustrating but um, I like, um, I like to be open and honest on this channel. And what I really enjoy is when I'm, when I bear my soul and a whole bunch of people go, Oh my God, I know exactly what you're talking about. I try to say what I think we're all thinking. Um, in just, you know, in an attempt to let you guys know, like I'm, you know, I like connecting with people. I, I really feel like we all the vast majority of us experience a lot of the same stuff, right? That's the reason for the series. I got to admit, sometimes that exclusivity feels good. 
And exclusivity comes in different forms. Actually, every knife that's on this table has a little bit of exclusivity associated with it, either in the form of it just being really expensive, uh, discontinued entirely or about to be discontinued, or you know, limited run stuff, or stuff that is just hard to get because the maker can't keep up with demand. It does feel good to be aware of something that's about to come out that you know is in limited supply, get your hands on it and then have it. And it seems to glow because you know that there aren't many out there. People want it, it is unavailable and you have one, right? That's uh, Instagram uh, is, uh, the, the, uh, does a good job of giving those of us who have these knives uh, a platform to go, look at this. <laughs> You guys like this? Well, you can't have it and I've got one, right? I mean, I'm I'm joking. I you know, I don't I don't think of it that way, but I'd be lying if I said that there was I didn't have a little bit of enjoyment with some of this stuff. For example, it's a gift from Jeff, Protex Strider um, automatic in titanium. Um, now you can go get a Protex Strider auto right now if you want. But you can't get one of these from the run of 40 in titanium. These specific ones, they did 40 like this, and then that was it. And uh, this was an incredibly generous gift from Jeff. I think those ran about $450 when they first came out. There's a lot of people, oh, who would ever pay? It doesn't matter. The reason I enjoy it so much is, I mean, first and foremost, I think it's an excellent tool, right? I mean, it's an automatic knife. There's a whole bunch of reasons to love it. Titanium, blah, blah, blah. Protect makes a great knife, made in the USA. But I also love knowing that it just is kind of a rare bird. I like knowing that, you know, it's it's not something that can just be rushed out and grabbed by anybody, right? What is it? Why do we why do we think like that? Why do we I mean if I'm really digging down into it, that means that I enjoy the fact that it it's just not available to somebody. So I so my the core of my thought process is, haha, I have it, you can't have it. Ugh. I kind of don't like myself for thinking that way. But I, I do, though. I'm, I don't think of it like that. I'm just like, ooh, it's so shiny and neat. And, you know, it's not available, right? <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I just do. I mean, those of you who have discontinued knives, Gail Bradley too, the owner of this knife, I believe his name's uh, Husby on Instagram. I'm sure he's proud of that. He's got one in great condition and they're gone. And that was a legendary... Uh, model from Spyderco. These things come and go all the time. The Hellhounds Signature Series, right? That's Tony Marfiome taking advantage of that thought process right there. Signature Series. What does that mean? Apparently, it's kind of like, this is kind of like a mid-tech, Microtech, right? But they aren't made in mass quantity. Yeah, you can go out and get a Microtech Combat Trudown whenever you want, but a Hellhound in that exact configuration, yeah, it's a little harder to get, right? In fact, I think they're still out there right now, but in, in six months or so, it'll be like, ah, and anybody who wants one is like, well, they were available a while back, but you can't, but you can get them in this color now, you know, or maybe this blade, whatever. Strider 0.75 AR, same thing. There's a little bit of drama surrounding this right now. If you guys don't know, um, Strider Knives actually collaborated with Medford, which is funny because I, when I handled this, I was like, this feels so Medford-y. I mean, it, it really feels like a Medford, um, but I was like, okay, whatever. Strider collaborated with Medford, and Medford, you know, this was a Strider design, but it was made by Medford. Strider apparently did not communicate that with the community until after the fact, and there was a little bit of an uproar on the Facebook group, but, you know, they, what they said is, your knife is still 100% made in the United States, and it is. I mean, Medford's, like, their, their fit and finish, their quality is <laughs> absolutely A+. Plus. So anybody who picked this up that didn't know that or was planning to pick one up, you know, don't worry. I mean, if you, if you don't like Greg Medford or you don't like Mick Strider, then okay, just ignore the knife, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's still made in the USA, but I can understand why people, you know, were kind of upset that he didn't communicate that. I don't know. That's for another time. I'll talk about that in the review. But again, they're gone now. You can't go get that, right? And people like how they look. It's interesting. It's a different looking Strider. Benchmade Infidel Military Law Enforcement Edition. You can get an S30V version of this on Blade HQ, but this one's in D2. Most people consider a lesser blade steel, 
But because it's the military law enforcement elite edition, which you can see right there, it's different. That little cursive writing makes it different, makes it rare. And they are more valuable. Whether or not you agree with it, people will actually pay more money for that, that version of it. Strider PT, same thing. It's just hard to get. Uh, SNG is hard to get. Not that they're gone or that the, you know, the mixed Strider is intentionally keeping them off the market to keep the demand up. Um, no, it's just demand is high because production is limited. Um, this particular variant of this knife, uh, the Spartan Harzi folder, um, sure, cutting edge gear is very proud of this knife, as he should be. This is just a cool one, right? If there are other ones out there like this, they aren't common. They're certainly not common. Uh, the Medford Full Thickness Marauder, you can go get a Marauder from Medford, but number one, you're going to have to pay for it because these guys are expensive. This particular variant is probably right around $1,000. But the full thickness Marauder, as far as I understand, it's being discontinued. On top of that, almost every single one of these is unique. So, yeah, there is joy in exclusivity. Is it always, is the exclusivity always justified? Is it always right? You know, like, like we, if we're going to get into the ethical part of this. Ah, uh, no, I mean, it, it's makers taking advantage of that. You know, it's like. Well, we're going to do this many because we want you to really want it. They're not available yet, but if you go ahead and prepay, you go ahead and pre-order, you can guarantee your spot, and then you and the other 150 people who got them can blow them up on Instagram and, ha-ha, look at it, I got one and you didn't, and then, you know, tag us in it, and then more people want to come back. You know, okay, if it's specific, if that's the specific structure of of that, then yeah, that's wrong, you know, but even when I do get my hands, like, okay, I'll tell you one that I really was frustrated with. I'll give you both sides <laughs> where and the, and the exact line where I, I'm contradicting myself. The A Purvis Zerks, uh, Shaker MT picked that knife up. It's made by Wee Knives. It was designed by A Purvis. Oh my goodness. That might be my very favorite knife of 2019. Oh my God. That thing was well made. Beautiful knife. I really wanted it, but, uh, you know, that exact stand it gone. Now people are telling me here and there, they see that knife in different configurations in other places, right? And maybe I'm completely wrong about this. Maybe the configuration I want is available. I don't know. Let's say for argument's sake that it's not right. Because that was meant to be a limited run knife as I understand it. Um, I look back at that now and go, well, that's frustrating. I wanted that. Why aren't there more of those? I'm upset about that. I feel left out. You know, I don't think that's fair. Now here's me in an alternate universe where I actually did acquire it. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. I can't believe I got one. <laughs> oh, that sucks for people who didn't get it. I'm going to post it all over in Instagram and wave it in their face. Not really. I'm not that malicious, but those are the two different sides of my mind where I'm like, Hey, this isn't fair because I, I didn't get it. So I'm going to act like, you know, this is a wild injustice. And then on the other side of it, if I did get it, I'd be like, well, now that I have what I want, I guess I'm not really going to stand up for anybody else, you know? And I'm just trying to be open and honest with you guys that I don't actually think in those extremes, but my thoughts, my initial organic thoughts represent those two sides as a foundation for the thoughts, right? I hope you guys, I hope that makes sense. I hope I'm not coming off as just an a-hole. Um, but yeah, I mean, I enjoy exclusivity. This, this Hinder XM18, there's multiple reasons that I enjoy it. Number one, it's exactly the dimensions and the size that I want. Um, and it's, you know, it's expensive. Uh, I don't know why I feel pride in owning an expensive knife, but I do. Um, but uh, it's M390. Um, on top of that, it's a DLT exclusive, meaning those are always in limited supply. And when they sell out, it's always a long time before they get any back. Um, and also it has a titanium scale connected to it that is an older variant that is unmilled on the inside. There's a few of these still floating around out there, but most of the new ones have milling. Excuse me, I don't like the milling. I want, I want my XM to be heavy. So I feel like that one's special. And it's not really special to anyone but me, but I enjoy it because... I know that if somebody wanted to recreate that exact... Sorry about that, guys. My phone cut out on me. Anyways, in my mind, I think, gosh, you know, if somebody wanted to recreate this, they'd have to get pretty specific, you know? They'd have to get a tumbled 
They'd have to be willing to pay for a hinder. They'd have to get a tumbled uh, spear point blade, uh, fullered spear from DLT Trading, assuming there's still some left, and I think there are. Um, depending on if you're watching this two years in the future, then probably not. But uh, and then they'd have to find a tumbled titanium textured scale that's not milled out on the inside, right? Not not a whole lot of you know. It's, 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 I mean, yeah, actually right now, if you really wanted to do that, you probably could do it fairly easily, but you know, I, I like, I feel like it's in my mind, it's special. Right. And so I, I get that joy of exclusivity, you know, even if it is kind of synthetic, I don't know why that is. And I honestly do feel bad that I feel that way, but I, you know, I would challenge anyone to tell me that they don't feel like that in some way, shape or form. Right. It's essentially just pride of ownership. And some people feel it in inexpensive knives, right? I mean, there, there are probably plenty of people out there who have this, um, the uh, CRKT Ruger um, Incendiary, which is a Carter design. Um, not an expensive knife, not a difficult knife to find, but you still feel pride owning it maybe, you know? Um, I know a lot of people are like that with cars, shoes, accessories, watches, right? We are in a world that inflates the idea of that, right? I mean, Rick Hinder's entire structure is make it your own because he knows that people like to sort of uh, display their own personalities and characteristics in the objects that they interact with every day, whether they're carrying it on their person or it's their clothes, the vehicle that they drive or the drink they order at a bar. Uh, I know a lot of pretentious people who only drink certain beverages just so that they can let people know that their taste is more refined and that <laughs> makes me sick. But I'm doing the same thing with folding knives. The same thing. So I can't judge. If you don't do it with folding knives or you're going to say out loud that you don't do it with folding knives, which for the most part I'm not going to believe, uh, you definitely do it with something else. And that's how I'm going to feel good about myself when I do this episode. I'm going to admit something that I consider to be a fault in myself and then and then openly say that everybody else must have the same flaw, so that's how I cope with it. <laughs> oh, man. I'm digging deep here. Maybe some of you don't feel this way. Maybe some of you are like, no, I genuinely will not buy things that are of limited supply because I don't think that's fair to other people. And if you're able to think that way, then kudos, you know. I can, I can, you know, openly see the issue with that, you know, not with these for, you know, I mean, not with like makers who just can't keep up, right? But I can openly see the problem with um, makers who are like, oh, limited supply, only so many are going to be made. Uh, yeah, it is an issue and it's not fair to everybody, but I still want some of that stuff. I'll tell you right now, if Rick Hinderer made, well, he already does it with his card series. He does that. They're limited, they're numbered, you know, and then and then once he finishes a card series, he moves on. Now, you can still get an XM18. But let's say Rick Hinderer, I'll admit something to you guys. If Rick Hinderer made a special model, let's say he called it uh, the XM19, right? And he was like, this is, this is not a generational change. It is not necessarily an evolution of the XM18. Well, maybe it is partially. Essentially, it's a unique knife. I've decided to make exactly 100 of these and you know, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to charge a little bit extra money, but they're special because they're numbered. And after they're gone, I will never make this model again. Me as a Hinder fan, um, the whole part about it not being the, you know, ethically right or, you know, <laughs> it being unfair to everybody would go out the window. Cause I'd be like, I got to have it. Where do I sign up? <laughs> That's what would be my initial reaction, you know? Um, and then I would feel really good about owning that knife because it was in limited supply. And then hi in hindsight, I'd be like, eh, that probably wasn't, that probably wasn't okay. But I sure am glad that I have it, you know? I mean, I can't sit here and tell you guys that I'm not a little bit like that. And I feel like we're all like that a little bit, right? Help me out. Be my crutches here. Um, you know, that's, that's part of it is... You know, at the end of the day, these are all knives and they really, you know, they're meant to do a job, which is cut, you know, and uh, knives do that. But, you know, those of us, most of us experience a particular joy, you know, cutting 
with an object that we have personally selected that wasn't just an afterthought in the checkout lane of a Home Depot. You know what I mean? The $2 keychain knives. Probably no pride of ownership there, but those of us who have spent, you know, $20 and up on a folding knife, we probably selected it. We were probably particular with our selection. We picked something that was aesthetically pleasing to us, maybe something that got good reviews, has a deployment mechanism we like, a material we like, you know, and there's there's pride of ownership there. And the line between that and pride of ownership due to exclusivity is very foggy. And it's probably something that it's probably something that we all experience in, you know, however minute a way. Um, but it is a thing. And I just I some of these things when I think about them and like, for example, this topic, I thought about it and I dug deep and I kept asking myself, why? Why do I think that? Why do I think that? Have you ever done that? Keep asking yourself why and then you get to the real reason at the bottom. I think it's actually a psychological technique. Um, I don't know. I'm not a professional. But I was like, oh, I'm kind of not like when I think about it like that, I'm not a very good person. You know, that's very selfish to think like that. But I do. So is the fact that I recognize it as selfishness, does that make it okay? No, it doesn't make it okay. But I can't help but feel like that. So the best I can do is make an episode <laughs> about it and admit it and then see if anybody else agrees with me. You know, right, wrong, I don't know. Um, I don't think we've seen the end of stuff like that in the knife world. I think we're still going to see it in one way, shape, or form. You know, companies and makers are going to get creative with it. Um, but, uh, I don't know. I don't necessarily think that there's anything wrong with feeling good about having something that you perceive as special. I think if you wait, I think if you legitimately wave it around in people's faces and you're like, ha ha, you can't have this, you know, I have it, you don't, you snooze, you lose. Yeah, that's your jerk, you know, and I would never do that. In my mind, I, I suppose what I'm saying is, is that a little part of me thinks that way, but I would never, ever do that. Um, but it, 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 I do agree that it is a problem that um, we have some of these limited run things, you know, because people want to get their hands on this stuff, you know, not just because it's shiny and cool and we all have this weird itch that we can't explain, but because, you know, a lot of this stuff is just really good. Like they're, they're just excellent tools. They're very well made and they should be you know, experienced by a wide variety of different people. And that's limited because the quantity is limited. I think we're at the point where all I can do is just reiterate. So I think that's going to be pretty much it for today, guys. If you enjoyed this episode of The Knife Guy, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.